already almost halfway through 2024 and me as a youtuber only finally wanting to share my top stocks actually 22 of them for 2024 so stick with me on this video and let you share my view why am i late it's because i needed a q4 2023 data with data we can come to conclusion and let me share my case hello welcome back to family investment my name is alex Ko. 2024 is the year of, I think, normalization, normality. So we're back to systematic investing. The last few years has been a wild ride of a little roller coaster. We've got a super high, a super low, and everything happened in the pandemic. Now, 2024 going forward, we need to be systematic. Why? Because you and me, our mom, dad, sister, brothers, we've got a day job, we've got family to take care of. This is not a full time job, and none of us want to quit our job because we love our job very, very much. Okay, we still got income to make. But investing is a side hustle that we hopefully helps us to build wealth while we sleep. And we want to make it as systematic as possible. That's why I'm releasing my personal hot list of 24 stocks, 22, sorry, that I am confident that we can just focus on and so we can ignore the rest of the noise. If anything comes in, obviously they will update in the future. But systematic investing is the way. And also data, data, data. I am, as you all know, an engineer and I respect data. Without data, I cannot come to a conclusion. I cannot feel anything right into that. So data from the Q4 2023 earnings stabilize what we know about the business and then the forecast going forward, where they are sustainable. Because at the end of the day, we want something strong, long-term, enough financial cash flow to move them forward, enough revenue, the business fundamental, the more they're all stabilized. So we want to find great quality companies that stays and they'll be here for a long-term future because the stuff that you and me by investing, not just the long-term wealth, but also our pensions and also the growth of our kids' portfolio for their education in the future. So this is where I'm coming from and let's get to it. And remember to like and subscribe and click on the bell button. Why? Because this video will only show you the stocks, but in the future going forward, I'll speak about the diversification, how it's going to be going, the buy trigger. This will all be missing in this video, but then it gives me time to provide section by section videos. Two very important basic fundamentals that you know to understand this video. First is my form of pyramid diversification. So there are four steps of this pyramid diversification that you can see here as on the chart and I'll lay them in four main sections and I'll explain to them when we get there. And secondly is that the conditions on how I select based on the 22 stocks I've selected for the start of 2024. So three things is the, I've got my chart here, is the revenue growth that we need to understand. That business is great, revenue is growing. We didn't want to be investing in a business that is going to go on a flat or this business that decline like tobacco or potentially oil or commodity. Okay, and then long-term investment because at the end of the day, we just want to find something that has a long-term horizon view. When you say long-term for a company's business perspective, they spend capex, they spend money reinvesting themselves to grow, to develop their technology even further. So that's very, very important. And finally, it's macro immunity because as you can see, we've got macro interest rates that's going on, global geopolitics. This affect the stocks that you hold. And the last thing we want is to buy and sell and buy and sell based on macro conditions by impacting the business. But there's some companies that we've identified here that the business model, that the world needs them. The world needs their technology, their goods, their products. And whatever they go, they are all household names. That's how I class macro immunity and not many YouTubers will see this this way. And this is the way I see things as an engineer, as an investor, as someone who protects the family funds. Let's kick off. As my pyramid scheme, let's start from the very base bottom, the staple ones. Companies, the business modes, they are all household names. These guys are here to stay until my children become great grandparents. I'm talking about business that will last for the next 40, 50 years. They might get disrupted, but at least they'll be stable because they're all everywhere. So let me begin with the first two pairs as I seen on the side of my chart here. This is Apple and Microsoft. I class them as staple stocks now. They pay dividends and they stretch everywhere and we use them in office, lockdown, whatever happens to the macroeconomics, they are here to stay. So for revenue growth, because they're slowing down, they're not super growth companies anymore. I give them two and a half star rating in here. Still here, still growing, still innovating. But for the long-term investment, they are always ever-changing, always pumping in billions and billions and billions, try to innovate, develop, and perhaps create the next big product like Microsoft doing AI, and Apple also coming venturing to potentially AI more uh, 3D goggles. 
and also for the macro um, impact they are four out of five star because they're all over the world they're global they're covered they could get impacted by interest rate but remember these guys have got high cash flow they're quite sustainable in that sense that's why i class them about four out of five stars next up you'll be surprised for my staple will be tsmc tsmc is established they are here not just for technology just not just chips you know they're all diversified to a point where semiconductor needs them you know you've got the internet of things that needs them you've got data center that needs them every aspect of technology growth for the next 30 to 40 years Taiwan semiconductor will be there people criticize them because geopolitical condition but sometimes we have to focus on the business rather than trying to focus on the next big war that's going to outbreak let's just focus on the business first revenue growth three out of five star very cyclical you know they don't want to invest so much because they want cash flow to keep them down on rainy days uh, long-term investment they are one of the most highest capex ratio company investing because they have to keep changing their fabrication to keep the business alive they have to keep innovating shutting down business they don't need and rebuild new factories and now they're expanding to Japan Europe America and Arizona so this is quite big and then for macro impact three star just now it could be two star but because of the cyclical of AI just now which will be longer growth I've upgraded from two star to three star in that sense my next set of uh, the staples, the pair here, is Berkshire Hathaway and Caterpillar. I class them as um, alternative to index because this guy cover all ground. Berkshire Hathaway comes from oil, commodity, food, and even Apple stock themselves. And then Caterpillar, they cover all industrial aspects from equipment, from manpower, from technology. So they cover all aspects everywhere you go, Caterpillar, industry wise, will be required to supply a piece of equipment to get their business going and also even power generation. So for revenue, revenue growth, ROG one star, you know, they are here, they pay high dividends, but they still require year on year on year. They're not here for super growth, but they supply what's been required as per the demand of the global growth. Long-term investment, you know, their products are not super innovative no more, okay? Some of these things, so I give them three star, they're still here to invest in marketing and technology, but not as aggressive as all the other tech stocks. But for macro impact, they are five star. Regardless of what goes on, they'll still be here to stay. Regardless of pandemic or world war, whatever that comes along, they're always there supplying the requirement for global growth because at the end of the day, the population will still be growing and therefore they're the highest one for impact microeconomic growth. Next on the final one on my staple list here is Louis Vuitton. Okay, Louis Vuitton. They are diversified in terms of luxury stocks. And CNBC has also said they, on Financial Times, has said that they are recession-proof stock. They're one of the most recession-proof stocks just now. They've been classified as that luxury. There's always rich people spending money, regardless of where. Okay, so revenue growth, three out of five star. They're here spending money, mainly on marketing. They change the model of the bags, the clothes, just champagne, but they're still here for revenue growth. They always have to go with the trend and they're all trend setters. And long-term investment, yes, they do reinvest. They reinvest in marketing, digital marketing, technology. You don't realize they're not here just to produce product, but they have to keep the brand going. They have to keep the flow with the new generation to introduce. And finally, macro impact. Again, five star for this guy, same as Berkshire, same as uh, Caterpillar. No way you can move them, but that's how Louis Vuitton moves because you need, you cannot just create a brand out of nowhere and let them run like Louis Vuitton. You need the history, you need the icon, you need the experience running through it, and nothing else but like Louis Vuitton. And now moving to the mature growth. Okay, mature growth are companies that have high cash flow, high revenue, and in fact, they're still growing. Some pay dividends, some may not. But they might move down the staple, but for the next 10 years, they'll still be at mature growth state because they're aggressive and they're plenty full of them are co founders out there. Two groups, let me share the first group for you. It's more semiconductor, more AI, I would say. It's AVGO, Meta, and Nvidia. Okay, revenue growth. I combine all three of them. You know, I'm not looking at just this year next, I'm looking for the next 10 years. Okay, revenue growth. I give them four star. They'll be growing. Some complain, Alex, it's five star, but then. There'll be time ups and downs, up and down, but you have to normalize in a straight where they should be. So I class them as four star. As a mature growth, that is pretty, pretty strong because normally companies will come as a three star. Long term investment, again, capex expenditure is high. They're five star. They're always innovating. They're always being alive. And finally, macroeconomic impact is three out of five because at the end of the day, companies will have to stop spending and their clients are all high uh, spent clients and if capex reduced they get impacted but as it stands just now recession has rebounded so they're still spending so three star it could fluctuate so i give them a three star because their clients are all high plus now next up 
for the next mature growth and four retail stocks all household brand names netflix amazon visa and nike these are the ones that all of us use you know even if you don't use one of them use at least the other three of them okay criticize on nike but then nike is a generation one every new young generation comes in they will be uh, affiliated with the likes of nike amazon going forward is staple Visa, regardless of what cryptocurrency, regardless of what Apple does, Visa is here to stay. It's very, very hard to disrupt. And finally, but Netflix. Okay, Netflix been here. Netflix been shaken. Has been pushed. Subscriber growth down, but it's still here with gaming. They're still here because they've got a broad base of subscribers now. They can do whatever they want, really. So in terms of that revenue growth, I give them three stars. I put a half star because now with the technology boom and everybody is committed online, now with South Americans, with Asia, with Africa, all using online, I think they're here to, to, to grow even bigger because it's part of life, it's part of way of life now. And uh, long-term investment, these are the companies that I like, I handpick them because they reinvest. They are not here to just return value to inform dividends, but they're here to invest to catch up with the trend going forward, the marketing is still on par uh, against all the luxury goods. And finally, the only ones that's a bit concerning is the macro impact. High interest rates affect them. Uh, retailers don't spend much money affects them. So it's very, very cyclical. But in the day, it's hard for us to leave without this company. So therefore, I class them as a mature growth. Now let's go to my high growth. My high growth is where I excel in this, where I get myself excited when I spot them because there's potential 5 to 10x when you spot some of these at a very, very young age. So the ones I've got just now, the group of four, is my AI narrative play, infrastructure AI, ARM, AMD, Marvel, and Hynix. Marvel because of uh, networking, because the more bus network that's coming through, through especially AI, ChatGPT, Sora, all the cloud computing system that's running more and more data bandwidth, I think Marvel will still have to expand because we hit the bottleneck, we need this company to expand the hardware capacity. Hynix or Micron, but I choose Hynix because Hynix has more capacity on total addressable market for memory for AI. Memory not just for a computing PC, now it's expanded to data centers and it's faster, different level of memory. AMD ARM, very obvious on a microchip, one is a designer and one is more uh, a fabulous designer. So uh, revenue growth for these guys, I put four and a half star. They are hyper growth. They are looking at about more than 15, close to 20%, better at 25% growth. These are companies that go on growth. Uh, long-term investment, they're always reinvesting to grow. They're reinvesting. They have to expand and expand and expand. Profit, revenue is important, but they have to ever expand to keep up going on the momentum. You don't spend, you don't get momentum. Macro impact, yes, three stars in the macro impact, very cyclical, but at the moment as it stands, for the next five years, they will be raging because of the technological evolution and there's nothing to stop this train. Next on my uh, growth, now it used to be my high risk growth, now I've pushed them back down because they're sustainable now, Uber and Tesla. Uber and Tesla all driving AI, self-driving vehicles. I think way forward, there's another spectrum that we need to focus on. Revenue growth, again, same four and a half star. No denying about them. LTI, long-term investment. Again, they're no deniable. They're always reinvesting to grow, seeking addressable market, seeking new industry to absorb and capture. Self-driving is the next one, robotics is the next one. AI narrative, marketing, advertising, they're everywhere. They're relentless, that's what we like. However, the macro impact is slightly more impactful on this one because anything with uh, consumer behavior, anything with uh, the interest rate, anything with price of cars or car, anything with employment, it affects this two company. And no denying that we have to watch, we have to stomach out the pain of high growth and this is where we are. You want to make money, you have to stomach out volatility. Another high growth on which I add, which surprised many people, is IBKR. I've been following them for years. I've been investing in IBKR for years in you know, pension accounts. IBKR is great even for your long-term kids because the thing is, I have taken financial like bank stocks off, you know, high interest rates, climate, I've taken them off. But IBKR have liquidity to pay their users. The IBKR is a company that provides stock brokerage for option trading, for buying stocks and shares. It opens up the world of opportunities for everybody. It's acting as a bank. You can put your money in IBKR, you don't use it, but they still pay you 5%. They pay you interest higher than fixed interest rates because they have liquidity on the fees to, to reply. 
Revenue growth, the two stars because and what else can they do? They just brokerage their earn fees, they share with you different liquidity, act like a bank. Long term investment growth, they all have to do is just expand their horizon, expand globally, educate people, but they cannot do that as fast. It's not their fault not to expand fast. Look at Robin Hood, they're trying to expand fast and quick, but they burn lots of money, so they have to do it stably. So, two stars I'm comfortable with. Macro impact, four. As I say, it's not just a brokerage number. We live in technology where everything's on the phone. So this one is a bit more resilient to any condition, even if we had any pandemic or anything, people are still be trading. The only thing that stops the whole thing putting to halt is if there's a war outbreak, a major war outbreak, then everything goes, people will just clump into gold. So four stars for the macro impact.